Keep the F-35 relevant for the future. There's a hot competition going on right now. That's about who's going to provide the power and cooling options to upgrade the jet. In this fireside chat, I sat down with Jim Courier, CEO of Honeywell Aerospace Technologies, to talk about what the company's offering to Lockheed Martin. So Jim, let's start with the basics. Explain what the Power Thermal Management Unit does for the F-35 and why it matters going forward. Yeah, so the Power Thermal Management Unit is an integral system of the F-35 aircraft. It basically integrates four major systems on board the airframe itself. The auxiliary power unit, the emergency control systems, environmental control, and thermal management or cooling capacity requirements for the aircraft itself. And within those four integrated systems, there are 14 major functions that are all commanded and controlled through the PTMU. How is this going to be incorporated physically into the jet? Now, obviously with a new build jet, that's easy enough. It's just new parts. When you're retrofitting, do you have to cut into the jet or is it something that's replaced while parts are replaced on a regular schedule as planned? Yeah, there is retrofit capabilities with the technology that I'm talking about and the upgrade path that we are proposing for our solution going forward. Within a couple of days, by the fact that you can reuse 95% of the hardware, you do a simple change out on a few of the components, none of the interfaces change to the PTMS system, none of the bracketry changes in the PTMS system, none of the electrical wiring will change in the PTMS system. So it's a rather straightforward upgrade of existing aircraft to incorporate both the 40 kilowatt solution and then ultimately the 80 kilowatt solution. So let's talk a little bit about the offering. Uh, you're in a competition with Collins for the next upgrade on this. It's being run through Lockheed Martin, interesting enough, not through the joint program office. Talk a little bit about specifically the Honeywell offering and why you think it's going to end up being the right choice. Yeah, so the, the element around low risk proven technologies take on two major elements associated with that. First and foremost, with a very straightforward software upgrade only, we're actually able to increase the cooling capacity by 25% and get 40 kilowatts of cooling capacity as a result of that. Well, at the same time, reducing about 40% of engine bleed usage to enable that capability going forward. And that software change could be implemented within a couple of year time frame. Beyond that, when you think about, again, growing into the mission that's required of the airframe and additional cooling requirements, we have a proven path to get to 80 kilowatts. We've developed an F-35 digital twin based upon a million hours of flight experience with our system on board the F-35, based upon the fact that this system is installed on over 1,100 aircraft. We have a very accurate digital twin model that we can use. And we've been able to demonstrate with that digital twin model the ability to upgrade to 80 kilowatts of cooling capacity in a very straightforward manner, meaning we can do it by reutilizing 95% of the existing equipment and 80% of the existing software that is used to control the system. So there's multiple paths to ultimately get to the 80 kilowatt cooling capacity needs that are required. And again, it's done in a very low cost proven way to enable that capability to go forward. How confident are you in the digital twins findings? And do you believe at some point you're gonna to have to do a actual physical test model of this capability? I mean, ultimately you do have to have the final test model to do that. But what I will tell you is that the fidelity of our digital twin model, again, based upon a million flight hours of experience with this system on the F-35, 1100 aircraft, all of that data comes back from the field gets incorporated into our digital twin model, refinements are made, and allows us to have a high level of confidence that we have a proven path to the 80 kilowatts to the digital twin model. Do you have a timetable for when a physical prototype has to be tested out? We haven't defined the exact timetable for that yet, but we're probably thinking about three to four years out for a physical model of the 80 kilowatt solution. But again, we can get to 40 kilowatts with just a software upgrade only, so you have that physical model already there available to you. So we're two to three years away from incorporating the software upgrade solution that gets you to 40 kilowatts. We're about two to three years beyond that for the 80 kilowatt solution. And again, the fact that we can reuse 95% of the hardware and 80% of the software for the integrated system allows us to move that forward in a much more expeditious manner. And again, low risk and a proven capability that exists today. So those are some of the timeline horizons that we're looking at. Have you had any conversations with international partners about this? We have. We're looking to advance those conversations with our international partners as well. 
And what I will tell you is the feedback that we've received is the desire is a low risk solution that provides the capability that is necessary and an affordable solution going forward. So we're looking forward to be able to have those conversations to a finer level of fidelity to be able to show some of the technologies that we plan to bring to the market relative to this upgrade. Obviously this upgrade is for the F-35. It's designed for the F-35. It uses F-35 parts, components. Is there technology that's being developed as part of this effort that you think is going to be applicable to other jets down the line? Yeah, so what I would say is the, the PTMS system itself is a unique, one-of-a-kind design specifically for the F-35 aircraft. However, technology that is being developed as a result of ultimately concluding with an F-35 PTMS system, that technology does have applicability into other military aircraft and other commercial aircraft as well. So where that capability exists to transcend technology that we've developed here into other applications, we look forward to doing that as well. What pieces of technology do you think might be applicable? It'd be more around thermal cooling solutions, okay. right? And, and how do you go about providing high density cooling in a very small compact package? Mm -hmm. Jim, thanks for the time, we appreciate it. Oh, Aaron, thank you so much for the time and the opportunity to speak with you about what we're doing on the F-35 and the PTMS upgrade.